expecting this back. Well, you're getting it anyway. I like to repay me debts. These notes are definitely from the town of robbery. Is it a stitch up? All right. The CIB's on its way. I think I have sufficient grounds for arresting you for further questioning on suspicion of conspiracy to handle stolen money. Hello? June, it's Bob. I, uh, I wanted to have a word with you about some uh, outstanding paperwork on the appraisals deadline. Oh, you shouldn't have risked it. Are you okay? Yeah, I didn't sleep very well last night. Come on in. I knew you'd be in. Uh, I had a word with mate of mine at Belgravia. Look, I'm going to have a quick scotch. Do you want one? Oh, no, no, no. Coffee? No, no, I'm all right, thanks. Go on. Um, my mate tells me that uh, you were bound to return. Yeah, I'm due back there at three o'clock this afternoon. So what went on last night? Oh, nothing. And they stuck me in the cells for a bit, then Mr Brownlow turned up, took my warrant card away. Gave me a lift home. He also told me that they couldn't find your snout last night. Oh. Well, they're probably talking to her now. Are you sure you know what she's up to, June? She's not up to anything. Look, look, do sit down. She's got an ex-husband just out of prison. Now, I reckon he's been using her to pass dodgy money that he got from a payroll robbery he did five years ago. So where did she say the money came from when she gave it to you? Well, one of those scratch card things. I've been thinking about it. I think she felt it would be easier for me to accept if I thought it was a freebie. But if she got the money from Hubby, she'd know it was Moody. No. June, you can't be sure about that. I know her, Bob, and I trust her. June, a snout's a snout. Most of them have got an angle. She's innocent. I'm innocent. The truth will come out eventually. Yeah, but maybe eventually it'll be too late. Maybe it won't matter who's right and who's wrong once the wheels start spinning up at Tintagel House. So what do you suggest I do? Get you and the lads to go and sort her out? Look, I made a personal decision. It backfired on both of us. CIB will work that out in the end. Is there anything you want me to do? Yeah, I want you to wake me up and convince me this isn't a nightmare and I'm not going to lose my job. I'm sorry. That's all right. Have you spoken to the Federation solicitor? <sighs> yes, he came over last night. And what's he advised you to do? <laughs> Refuse to answer any more questions, just like everybody else. And is that what you're going to do? <sighs> oh, you know the score, Bob. If I refuse to cooperate, they'll make certain assumptions. It may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned, etc. Yeah, but anything you say may be used against you. Yeah, I know. Look, I think I'd better get going. I really don't want to be late. It's not one o'clock yet. I know, I can't stand hanging around here much longer. Well, I'll run you over there, shall I? No, you better not. Drop you off at the tube? You should be at home doing your paperwork. Oh, got better things to worry about. All right. Sergeant Ackland lent this woman some money on the quiet and she paid her back in the stolen notes. That's what Polly said. Yeah, well, look, she went in alone, right? So, I mean, even if she gets away without a criminal charge, she's going to have to face a board. Very cheering, Rich. Jamila, front desk, and Tony, Dave, Sierra, Oscar, too. Right, that's the duties. Now, I hope you've all remembered that tomorrow is the deadline for your appraisal paperwork. What's the news about June? Yeah, we thought she'd be back at work. Yeah, yeah Sarge. So I, I think it's only fair we should be told. All right, keep it down. I was just about to say that we've been informed by Mr Conway that Sergeant Ackland was released on bail last night. She has to return this afternoon for an interview at Belgravia. Hopefully, she'll be straight back after that. In the meantime, I hope we can all concentrate on doing a decent day's work. Shall we make a start? Are you making progress? Sir? On your paperwork, Bob. There's your own appraisal to finish off, plus your PC's evidencing. Uh, yes, sir. I got a lot of that done at home this morning. Uh, when can I see it, then? Uh, at the end of the shift. I know this business with June makes it difficult, Bob, but I'll need it by six. Sir?
should be guilty until proven innocent. Someone ought to be doing something. Like what? Oi! There's a lot of crime being committed in here, is there? Now I've already had a word with you lot. Sarge! Polly, not now, later, please. What's up with you? Oh, he's just worried about you, like the rest of us, Tone. Registration? Jane. 124. KLR. And, uh, Sergeant Ackland. Oh, sorry, I'm late. Can we, uh, can we have a quick chat outside? Have you thought more about what I said last night? Yes, and I've decided to answer their questions. What about Detective Superintendent Watts? Well, if she's as good at her job as you say she is, then we shouldn't waste any time getting all this sorted out. Sergeant Ackland, you're an experienced officer, but you're not an experienced interviewee. I can handle it. Sergeant Ackland, ready when you are. Right, I'd like to go back to the beginning. Was your meeting with Cherry Towner yesterday a personal arrangement or a professional one? She'd phoned me at home the night before and asked if we could meet. I assumed it was about some intelligence I'd asked her to collect about a suspected illegal drinking club. You told us yesterday that you went alone to the meeting in breach of regulations. Yes, ma'am. Did your controller know you'd gone alone? No. Did you get prior authority for the meeting from your controller? Uh, you see, uh, there was a rape on our patch early yesterday. He wasn't in his office when I went in. So, did you discuss it with the DI or your duty officer? No, he was out with Mr Deakin. I knew that Mr Munro was tied up with appraisals. I made out a 50-20 about the meeting as soon as I came back. But you had a chance to discuss it with Mr Meadows when you gave him the 50-20? Well, no, he still wasn't in. I left it on his desk. Did Cherry pass on anything useful about the drinking club? No, she said that she hadn't been able to talk to her contact there. What did you talk about then? She wanted to tell me she decided to come off the register. Why? Well, various reasons. I think having her ex-husband out of prison understandably made her very nervous about seeing me. Also, she'd managed to get regular work recently. She didn't need the extra money as much. What sort of work? Uh, she's a cleaner at some offices. I can't pay much. No, probably not. It didn't occur to you that this improvement in Cherry's circumstances could be related to the reappearance of Roy Towner in her life? Well, no, I didn't even know he was out till yesterday. Cherry hadn't told you before? Uh, since I've been made up to Sergeant, I haven't been able to see so much of Cherry recently. I just don't seem to have the time. Why do you think Cherry lied to you about where the money came from? She was very keen to repay the loan. Now, if that money came from Roy, he must have conned her into thinking it was kosher. You see, I think she thought it would be easier... I really don't think that suppositions on Sergeant Ackland's part are as relevant as facts at this stage. Yesterday, you described Cherry Town as an intelligent and trustworthy informant. She is. But she lied to you. And if we accept what you've said about the money, she's been conned by her ex-husband as well. How does all that add up? Well, if I understood that, ma'am, I'd have told you long ago. Do you normally form a personal relationship with snouts? As I told you last night, Cherry is different. I have known her long enough to consider her a friend. So you'd want to help her out if you could, as with the loan? Yes. So would you also risk helping her pass stolen money? No! I went to the meeting for legitimate reasons which I explained in full in the 50-20. Now, why would I risk that if I was up to something with her? All right, Sergeant Ackland, we'll stop there for now. Interview terminated at 15.32. DS Mellor will take you back to custody while we verify what you've told us. Sir, Mr Deacon's just phoned down to warn you in advance. CIB's in your office. Am I under arrest? No, but June Ackland is. Get away. No, I'm not joking, sir. Some snout palmed her off with some stolen cash. She was arrested last night. I can't see anything, ma'am. Hmm. Uh, Detective Superintendent Watts from CIB, Jack. DS Meller, DCI Meadows. Ma'am? I hear you weren't informed about Sergeant Ackland's arrest yesterday. No, I was uh, in and out of an inquiry all day yesterday. Then I had to fly to Newcastle to talk to a suspect. I've only just got back. This is the handling file of June Ackland's informant, is it?
Yeah, that's right. Were you aware that the informant was gathering intelligence about a suspected illegal drinking club in the area? Drinking club? No. You don't recall ever discussing it with Sergeant Ackland? No. Did you authorise a meeting between Sergeant Ackland and the informant yesterday? No. Did you receive a 50-20 from Sergeant Ackland with a report of such a meeting yesterday afternoon? She said she left it on your desk. No, Mum, I didn't. Through every bit of Corrie's in my office. There's nothing else I can do. There's no possibility that June omitted to fill up the 5020s. None whatsoever. They better broaden the search then. Sir. You're going to be popular downstairs. Thank you, Derek. Uh, sir. What? We'd like to help look for the missing 5020. So we're sitting around waiting for news. Well, have you okayed it with Mr. Monroe? Yes, sir. All right then. Go through the confidential waste. Start up here and work your way down. Sir. It's not in the file, it's not in the office. Mr Meadows says he never saw a 5020 relating to your meeting. Well, I left it on his desk. He must have mislaid it. Does your controller often mislay confidential reports on informants? No. Has he ever mislaid one before, to your knowledge? No. Why is there no earlier log entry in the file relating to this information that Cherry was supposedly developing? Because I hadn't discussed it with Mr Meadows. Why not? All information supplied or discussed by an informant should be logged with the I know the regulations, ma'am. Look, until yesterday, I hadn't seen Cherry in nearly two months. She mentioned the club in passing during our previous meeting. I hadn't felt that it was concrete enough to report. Cherry can confirm all this. Why don't you just talk to her? That's not possible at the moment. But why not? Because she's disappeared. What do you mean she's disappeared? D.S. Mel has just talked to a neighbour of hers. She says she saw Cherry and the kid getting into a black cab outside the flat, carrying a suitcase at about nine o'clock last night. Any ideas? Sergeant Ackland. No. Does Cherry have family she might have gone to see? Uh, no, not that I know of. Friends, then? Uh, she did mention that she was thinking of taking her son on holiday, maybe... Without letting anyone know? That isn't the kind of person you described her as yesterday. Someone who'd just take off without telling anyone. Is she that kind of person? No. So this is highly unusual behaviour. Sergeant Ackland, I must advise you now that if you answer any more questions, you will be doing so against my strongest possible advice. Right. I'll be frank with you, Sergeant Ackland. I don't believe you're stupid enough to have lent Cherry Town a £250 of your own money or disorganised enough to have gone to that meeting alone without good reason. And I don't believe you met Cherry to talk about an illegal drinking club at all. I believe you're lying. To protect Cherry or for gain or both. Has it never occurred to you that Roy Towner or his associates might have found out that Cherry was working for me? I mean, there's just a possibility they've done something to her. We've counted that out. Why? Stafford Rose got an obo on Towner's flat. She went straight back to his place after she'd seen you yesterday. From what the officers said down there, Cherry and her ex parted on friendly enough terms. I'm getting authority to do a check on your personal finances. How long is that going to take? Look, I've told you the truth. I've cooperated with you fully on the basis that Cherry and I knew nothing about that money. I've answered all your questions and I've put up with your negative assumptions and you still have no solid evidence that Cherry or I knowingly handled that money. Now, I'm not prepared to sit here any longer batting away shots in the dark while you hunt around for excuses to keep me locked up. This isn't just going to go away, Sergeant Ackland. Neither am I. I have nothing further to say. I need a break. Sergeant! I've got nothing further to say. Do you want anything? My job back. In my view, you're being stitched up. Why don't you just face up to that and start bailing yourself out instead of going down defending some snout that doesn't care what happens to you? Any luck? No, nothing, Gov. Still searching, Gov. I've had orders from Brownlow, as well as hate stands from PCs. Now, she said she'd left it here, so assuming she's not making it up, it's got to be somewhere. We're late, Gov. Have you tried your briefcase? That's one place it definitely isn't. Then in my experience, Gov, it's where you should definitely be looking.
must have pictured it with something else last night. Right, uh, there you go. DCI Meadows apologises for the delay and confusion. Thanks, sir. Is there a problem? Looks okay. No one's put it through the Zumper, though. Hasn't been time stamped. There's nothing to prove. You didn't write this up and forge Sergeant Ackland's signature ten minutes ago, sir. Well, where does that leave Sergeant Ackland? I'm not sure. Right now, she's a long way up the river without her paddle. How can you be certain that Cherry isn't involved with her ex-husband in this scam? I just can. For your own good, you need to think about the possibility that you're wrong. And how's that going to help me? Damage limitation? No, I'm not interested in damage limitation. I'm interested in the truth. That's very laudable. Look, let's focus on the priorities. Whether she's innocent or not, we need Cherry Towner in order to have a chance of exonerating you. Just assume for a moment that you're wrong. Assume that Cherry has been taking money from her husband and that she planned to disappear with some of the cash having repaid her debt to you. Have you any idea where she might have gone? Wherever she's gone, there's some perfectly reasonable explanation for it. Like what, for instance? Someone across the road from the flat said that they saw the snout leave with a child in a cab. Out of a suitcase and they were in a hurry. Well, that'd be the money gone then. Should be halfway to the Bahamas by now. Yeah, but it doesn't make sense. I mean, June trusted this woman. She knew her well. Why would you want to stitch June up? The money? Yeah. Where would you go with a suitcase if you weren't travelling? Laundrette, pawn shop, Oxfam. Even if you find her, there's nothing you can do. Well, I can tell her my mate's in trouble. Here you go. Past payroll robberies matched against recent release notices. And? Got a name. Roy Towner, wife Cherry, son David. Was he nicked here? Yeah. We can have a look at his records then. It should be in there. Here we go. Towner, Roy James. Arrested 17th 11th 92, two days after the job. Personally informed Cherry, place of arrest St Hughes. On the way of the hospital? I don't know, there's nothing about injuries sustained. Maybe he was visiting somebody, or his kid was sick again. Nothing else, possessions, brief was called, that's it. So where would you go overnight with a sick child in a suitcase? Friend of June Atkins. Why? Who are you? I work with June. I'm a friend of hers. I thought you'd like to know that she's in some trouble. How's the lad? Well, he's better now, thanks, but he was terrible last night. How did you find me here? I haven't even called work. Hours of deduction. Okay. So, what have June's problems at work got to do with me then? It's about some money that you gave her. I don't understand. Money that was too hot to handle? How do you... Oh, for... Oh, well. Is it bad? As bad as it gets. Oh, look, I had no idea. It was money that no. I... No. It's better I don't know the details. What do they think I'm involved in passing it? I can't tell you that. What do they think June is? What do you think? Oh, look, I just... Well, I'm sorry. I've got to go. But as her friend, I just thought you'd want to know. She's going to need all her friends now. Sarge. Debbie. Anything on Sergeant Ackland yet? No, Debbie, I'll let you know. Oh, Bob. Sir. It's 8.30, I'm still waiting. I'm not that far off now, sir. Oh, excuse me, Sarge. There's a woman in reception asking for Sergeant Ackland. She won't give me her name, but she said it's an emergency. Uh, do you want me to... No, I'll see you to it. Hello. I'm Inspector Monroe. I need to speak to Sergeant Ackland. I'm afraid that's not possible. Why not? Can you come this way? Sergeant Ackland's not going to be available, I'm afraid. Um, can you tell me what it was concerning? Well, if I can't talk to her, I'd like to make a statement. What about? My ex-husband, Roy Towner. 
and some stolen money. Uh, could you wait here a second? Jim Miller, can you get me the number for CIB? Yes, sir. Yesterday, I gave Sergeant Ackland some money that I owed her from a while ago. £250. It came from my ex-husband, Roy. He's recently come out of prison for armed robbery. End of last week, he gave me £500. He had a car sales business before he went inside. He said he'd done a good deal for a car with an old mate that he used to work with. So I was chuffed about the money at first. What do you mean? My son's been in the hospital since yesterday evening. I stayed there with him last night. This afternoon, I went out round the corner to get a few things for Davy from the shop. I bumped into the bloke, Roy's mate. I said something to him about the deal they'd done. He didn't know what I was talking about. So then I put two and two together. I knew some of the money had never been found. Did you tell Sergeant Acklin where you got the money from? No. I told her I'd won it. Well, she knew how short I'd been in the past. I wanted her to feel comfortable about taking it. When I worked out what I'd actually given her, I came out here to tell her about it. Oh, what now? Good news. Cherry Town has just given a voluntary statement to Superintendent Watts down at Sun Hill. Neither of you will be charged. Congratulations. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> How is Cherry? Where did you find her? We didn't. She found us. Come on. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I reckon it's more trouble dealing with informants than doing without them. Yeah, but we can't do without them. That's the problem. Hey! Oh, look at the CIP got it right for a change, eh? Yeah, nice yeah. to have you back, Scott. <laughs> Right, off you go then. You're popular. I've just been around a long time. You're back. <sighs> Feels like a year's gone by. How are you feeling? Okay. I could have done without the time in the cells, and it looks like I might still be in trouble for breaching discipline regs. Not if Mr. Brown has got anything to do with it. Look, I've just been talking to Matt, and I think I owe you a very big thank you. No, you don't. Yeah, I do, Bob. Thanks. Uh, forget it. Yeah, I intend to. Right, what have I missed? Oh, it's me flying around trying to avoid Monroe and his deadlines. You managed to fight back on the appraisals? Uh, silly question, you haven't had time. Look, I could help you later, I could stay on. Or you could take me out and buy me a few pints. Good idea. Who said pints? He did. Later. I've got about 16 hours work to do in half an hour. Me too. Better get on with it then. <laughs>